Well, I got one right down there. Scent post set. Made about a good solid week ago. And a, uh, I had a catch at another location. Look at him. He is a good one. He is a good one. Let me get outside and get him. Just a gorgeous coyote. Front foot catch, scent post. So I caught one right here the other day and uh, remade the set. I got deer prints really close to the set. They missed it. They missed it. So anyway, but uh, this guy come along and what a beauty he is. A great big son of a gun. My God, what a big old coyote we got there. I'll get over here where the sun's on the right side of it. But he is a big male coyote. Wow. Anyway, let me put him down. We'll remake the set. Okay, we got that coyote put down. And uh, I'm sorry for the shadow, but I think that's the only way it's going to go with the wind coming at me this way. Um, I have, he is a, a really big coyote. You know these trail sets, scent post sets, this thing, he has eaten a lot of this dirt. Let me pull some dirt down here. I don't really have, he's just, a, it's, it's very, as you can see, it's very sandy. So I kind of got to build this area up a little bit. Let's build it up and, uh, we can recreate a trail, but it's really, I'm going to have to kind of bed on the ground and build up around it. Uh, full pad catch. These big coyotes like this, they, you know, they're not necessarily always going to jump in a dirt hole set. Trail sets, scent post sets, where they are walking gets these big guys, the old ones. New coyotes can come in. That's that's how I, I that's how I see it. And you know, it, 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 I said it many times. In order to in order to whack them, uh, in order to stack them, you got to whack them. That's just what I've noticed in uh, in my trapping. You got to get rid of the resident coyotes and these big coyotes. I mean, yeah, he might be interested in a breeding female, but it can end right there too. My pan was a little bit loose. I got to adjust it just a little bit. I want a little a little tension, three and a half to four and a half pounds is fine. Let me get a pan cover. I got my pan cover, but I think I better build this up some more. And uh, he had really scraped it uphill. But I'm gonna have to. I need a little bit to re, re establish a trail through here. That's what I'm that's what I'm looking at. That is the trap. Let's get that. We'll bring a little bit for this side. Because I don't mind having a ridge on each side of the trail. He left me a Christmas present. There we go. I don't mind having a little ridge on each side of the trail to guide him. You never know about your remakes. Um, you kind of got to work with what you got. All right. Pan tension's been adjusted. Boy, the wind just calmed down for us. That's perfect. Makes it a lot easier to do this. That's ready to go. So I'm basically having to build the ground up around my trap. He, he got, he's, he's taking the soft stuff out and all I got left is a hard pan. I'll go ahead and get a pan cover on here.
I cut enough pan covers last year. I didn't have to make any new ones. That's kind of nice. And uh, with these landscape fabric, I've noticed also that when you catch the animal and if you have a breeze, a wind, what I think happens is a lot of times the wind catches it once the animal's jumping around and a lot, a lot of times I'll find it just a few feet over that is downwind and it looks great. And uh, there we go. There we go. All right. Scrape up a little bit here. It's going to run right through it. And we'll get our... Our uh, wisp broom here, and I'll try to pack it in the best I can. Yep, she's solid. So I don't know what this particular uh, plant is, but it holds up well out here. And see if I can't dig a little bit. Because you don't want... I'm going to scoot it. There we go. Pull some more dirt around it. Yeah, I don't know this particular grass. There we go. I got that. I may be covered up my Christmas present. There it is. Yeah, I needed that. I needed that scat. So we caught a coyote earlier, right up here, not 10 yards away. Um, turned right around, remade the set. That was a first night catch, first check. Knowing it's tore up, I decided I better put in a second set. They're telling me he wants to come out on this side. Okay, it's been about six checks. I finally got this guy. Uh, on this particular ranch, I never know exactly how them rascals are going to go. Let me broom this out. I don't need that now. I got a little bit of a hump right there. So let me level out the ground a little bit. I'd much rather that be level with the ground or a slight depression, and that fix that. All the ground here, all the ground here is pretty soft. So I mean, even in my pickup, sometimes I've had to, I've had to uh, lock it in four wheel drive just to. Let's get a little bit of dirt over it. Put that slag right on the back side. Let's open it up up here. Make it more inviting. They don't need to be narrow. Kind of like a good cattle corral. You want it kind of wide on the entrance and then you squeeze them in a little bit more. We'll do the same thing over here. I think that looks pretty good. Brush it out a little bit. I have that set complete. Kind of an unusual location here. So now then, upwind, we're going to use the scat that he left me. About 10 inches, pan center. And this is a spot we want to use a gland lure. I know, I mean, I think there's still a lot of confusion on when to use land lures. There we go. Oop, that's a different lure. Find the right one. I had a bad accident. I hit. I hit a very large uh, uh, badger hole and everything went up in the air and everything came down really hard and one of them is my lures and they broke. 
that was a bad deal. So I'm using High Hills Gland Lure. I'm going to smear a little bit where the coyotes, if they want to smell it, they got to come to my side. I dropped a little bit. There we go. They need to come to the side I want. And secondly, put a little bit of urine. And I'm using coyote urine. And uh, our, our remake is complete. It's uh, fast and easy to do these scent posts, but understand I said it here because they were telling me to what they were walking exactly right down here. All I did was put a trap under their feet. Scent posts to me are, not, are something that we don't draw the animals to. It's more of an ambush. We could, a lot of guys like to talk blind trail sets. I think these guys are minkers. I think they, they deep down, they're a mink guy. I, I'm only joking, of course, but I like putting in a set with just a little bit of an odor. I don't want to leave it to chance, excuse me. I don't want to leave it to chance that the coyotes are uh, going to approach it uh, and stop. I don't want a full gate coyote going across my trap, especially in, in this. There's nothing really to slow them down. Uh, when I do do a blind trail set, I generally have grass, bare dirt, grass, bare dirt, grass, bare dirt. And you can see where the coyote's putting his foot down. In this case, I can't see exactly the rhythm of how they're going to put, put their, their feet down. So I'm going to slow them down get them to whoa, lift a leg, have some visual over here to get them across that trap. Wind is coming, kind of quartering like this, just the way I want it. And uh, I basically re-established a trail here. That's all, that's all these are. But if you find sign, you set the sign right there. Don't need, it, don't need anything fancy. We're not drawing him in because he's already here. I hope that helps, guys. Let me show you the set from from you, the, my perspective. And there we go. Nothing too fancy. Coming off of this corner. You got to love points. You got to love a point. You see how this projects and goes on around? Coyotes, uh, coyotes, deer, whatever, they'll walk around the edge of the point. We just have to find out where are they walking. This was a cornfield in row, I don't know, this is probably row five. I would probably set in row five. It's to, they're telling me where, which row they want to walk. So anyway, fast, simple, and looks good. Looks, looks deadly. How you doing, trappers? I, uh, I was asked to do another skinning demo out here on the trap line so uh, I, I pulled two other coyotes out and uh, thought we'd go ahead and go through them so I got a young female here and an older male and uh, yep got an older male so anyway the first thing I want to do here is is uh, get that female pup coyotes pretty easy if you're going to be in a skinning contest make sure you grab a, a freshly caught pup female about a 
as easy as it gets. I do use a skinning machine called a critter skinner, but I don't think Bill Gracie, ma uh, Gacy, Gracie makes them anymore. Someday, if I ever become rich and famous, I'll try to make some of them. But that's not on the docket yet. There we go. So we have them opened up to where we can hang it on the skinner. So let's go ahead and I'll bring the camera and get it readjusted. Let's make sure we got it in view. Not too bad. Raise it up a little bit. There we go. So I'm using the speed gamble. And what I do is about where the white meets down here is where I begin on the uh, tail. Work yourself on up, keeping the dark fur on the dark side and the light fur on the on the belly side. Trying not to get too much muscle. The, the, if I can just keep it there, the better off the skin is going to go. Let's do the same thing on the other side. Going around the vent, basically I'm cutting right there, going up, and keeping the white on the white, and the dark on the dark. There we go. Now something that will help you, it helps me anyway is to kind of cut a few of these uh, belly side tendons because that we're going to want to pull that side down as much as we can there we go and that'll help out the back side pulling and if you're not doing that give that a shot Okay. Now I like to try to pull it like I'm pulling a bow and arrow. Pulling down, pulling this belly side down, and pull it down. I might need an extra hand on that side. There we go. Cut a little bit of that gristle there. And I got it. That side's done. Same thing with this side. Pull that belly fur down and then pull the back side. I got a problem with my right shoulder, so I always got to use two hands on this side now. So now I got it opened up. Now I, I did okay here. You notice I don't have a lot of cut into the meat. So that helps me with my time. So now we're going to cut that, cut this tail, being careful not to cut into the hide. There we go. Cut a little bit of that tendon to help it pull down easier. Now then, I'm going to come here just below the testicle and I'm going to cut that upward. Same way with over here, leaving the testicles on the hide. I don't need that. Just cutting the skin. There we go. So now my belly is loose. Exposing the sheath. And cut the, the penis away. All right. Pull that down. Pull this down. That'll make it easier to pull that tail. 
He's a big boy. I'm gonna have to help that tail out a little bit. Trying not to cut into the hide. There's they're right there. So now using the smallest hole that you can, and you can use your pliers. Pull that back. And then what I'll do is I'll just run my knife down the tail and slit it. All right. I got it low enough for my skinning machine. And this is what helped me out a lot. And I, and I always grab a hold of the belly side. Hold them legs down. Alright. So now I've exposed my legs. I use my steel. Cut that, pull that down. I try to get a little forearm. There we go. There we go. So I have a, I'm just below the forearm. I'll cut that leg out. Then you can just pull the leg totally out of the hide. For this job, the hardest part's really done. So there we go. Let me lower this down. And I'm going to lift it just to a point where my ears are exposed. Oops. He's too tall. Let me do it a little bit more. So now my ears are exposed. Stick my knife underneath and cut upward. I think I'm going to go ahead and sharpen it a little bit. Always give it a final little bit on my steel. Gets it nice and sharp. So now I'm going to go right where the mouth cheek is and I'll pull and I'll cut that out. Enough to where I can stick my finger in it. There we go. down a little bit and cut down. We don't need that bottom jaw, that bottom lip. So we can cut that out. That'll help us on that. Now then, cutting there close to the scalp. I'll try to cut my eyes out and keep them fairly small. There we go. Same way with this side. We've got this guy. This is about the only place I get blood, and I'm notorious for cutting that vein right there in the mouth. So we have one coyote done. I don't know how long it took me to do that. I mean, you got to have a sharp knife. It, you got, that takes that time. I could have about a dozen knives and just do one per coyote, but we got it done. Nice coyote. Let's go ahead and Lay him out for now. All right. For many of you, this I'm just going to do the easy the easy glands. We're just going to go ahead, cut around that anus. Just 
All right, we get about four to six inches of intestine and a little bit of hair that goes with it. I don't want to, the gland is, is not the anus itself, but the white tissue underneath. Second, we'll take these hind heel pads. Just the hind foot. And we'll do the same thing on this side. So there is my two hind hip hoof pads. When they're doing their kickbacks, they're leaving scent. So I can stick that in the bag. And for there is hot glands in here. I think I pulled one of them out with the hide. Let me raise it up a hair. There it is. A little purple blue. If it doesn't come with the hide, it's a little purple blue gland right there. And that's the hot gland. And the other one popped out with the hide when I was skinning. So those are the easy glands to get. And let me lay this carcass. And we'll do one more. Pick some of this dirt over here to cover the blood, and we'll do the, the little female next. Okay. That went pretty well. I didn't really make too many mistakes on that one, if any at all. I'm going to sharpen my knife again. Starting about oh, two thirds of the way down the tail, about where the white of the tail ends. We're going to go up, go around the vent, the anus, and just barely go under the skin here. The white on the white and the, and the dark on the dark. That side's done. We'll do the same thing on this side. Line it under the skin. There we go. All right. So, just like the last one, pull down the belly side. And you, whoop, I, did, I did a little mistake there. A little tiny cut on the leg, but that's a leg. All right. And the same thing on this side. want to make that easy to pull down it makes it easier for me I'm becoming an older man there you go so I think we're ready to do our skin pulling pulling the belly side down first and then get this high enough to give you the lever and just pull down just like that belly side Pull down. Again, a little slice there, but it didn't stay with it, so I'm in good shape. Before anybody asks me about the dimensions of this skinning machine, is I did a YouTube video on it. I, I'm, it's, it's, I don't make it. I talk about the measurements. You can go ahead and uh, do what you want from there. But now from on the female, I got the vulva there. I'm gonna cut into the meat and come up, separating the vulva from the belly side. And then, there we go. Just pull that down. Pull it down, pull it down. 
Get it to where your ergonomics is right for you. And pull out the tail. Thought I actually snapped it there. And then let's go ahead and slid it out. All right, so. My hide's ready for the machine. Pops are small enough that I can, I don't need to worry about it. I don't need to double pull them. So again, getting it down below the wrist, the, the elbow, and repeat the other side. And now I don't have to cut my legs off anymore. I used to saw them off. That saved a nice step just by that. Okay, cut out our ears. Don't let your knife get too far behind. Keep your knife, keep your knife uh, sharp. It'll be a lot less frustration for you. What I'm doing is just cutting out some of the sinew there, freeing the animal from its from the skull. Time to cut out that lower jaw, which we don't need, that lower lip. And again, let's get them eyes. Yep. A little bit of a big eye there, but that's all right. They're going to throw the head away. That's what the grown wolves tell me, so there's really no purpose of making it perfect. We just need a nose to put it on a stretcher. So there we go, folks. Another coyote um, put up. I don't know how long it take, took me. I mean, the machine helps me a lot, but a real nice only thing wrong with this hide is it's, is it's small, but a little beautiful coyote. And um, I hope this uh, skinning demonstration helped you.